that's what drove the success, his appetite for risk, his cultivation of the long-term relationships he had throughout the country, throughout the insurance industry. And uh, so he had a very um, kind of a little paradox. He had a very entrepreneurial insurance company. It was exciting. It was uh, clearly growing. It was the people um, you're in Scottsdale, Arizona. He had no problem recruiting talent. Uh, so you put all that together, the momentum just kind of took it up and up through the 1980s into the 1990s. Uh, they have long ago surpassed one billion with a B in written premium, um, a long way from their goal of five million at the end of 1987. Uh, so it seems to all have worked. Raleigh was able to put together a, an organization guided by his philosophy uh, that was contagious among the employees. People wanted to come to work. They were excited to be there because they knew they were part uh, of a, a winning team. And I don't mean that in a cliche form. I mean, you just had to look at one year to the next and it was just kind of up and up and up. So very, very exciting. Um, it was the high flying 80s, I'll admit, and the 90s. Uh, things have gotten more bureaucratic. And then Roughly 10 years ago, um, Nationwide, which had all, up to that point been a very silent partner, very willing and um, uh, happy to get their share of uh, revenue from Scottsdale's success, they decided to become a little more active, um, increase their presence in the Southwest. And um, one day we got a knock on the door and we're from Nationwide and we're here to help you. So uh, Nationwide swallowed up Scottsdale Insurance Company. I think it took uh, about nine months for the city of Scottsdale to okay taking down all the Scottsdale insurance company signs because Scottsdale, in addition to what I've said, was a tremendous a corporate citizen. Uh, they they ph philanthropic, I mean, the whole nine yards there. So uh, roughly 10 years ago, Scottsdale insurance company uh, went away and it is now under the conglomerate of Columbus, Ohio based nation nationwide insurance company. And how's the business doing now? Is it thriving and growing as it was before? Well, uh, Nationwide is a standard lines carrier. That is, again, the all states, the state farms, that kind of thing. So they don't, they're not by definition uh, a, a risk taker. And I don't mean that as a knock. I mean, that's just the market they're in. So you add that to the mix and the entrepreneurial spirit, the, uh, the risk taking that went with the excess and surplus market that Scottsdale specialized in. Uh, the market's still out there, but Nationwide is probably looks a lot more like a standard company than an excess and surplus company at this point. Yep. Well, that's a perfect example of changing an origin story. The Scottsdale Insurance Company was built on risk and entre entrepreneurship, and then all of a sudden, they they become more risk adverse. Not that they give give it up, but they become more risk adverse. Yeah. So they lose that energy that went into their success. And while they may still, you know, part of nationwide, you can't argue with their success, but it's different. So I would I would venture because one of the things that happens with an origin story is you attract people that fit your story. So I would imagine a lot of the old employees left. Well, uh, it's like uh, in sports, a good coach usually spawns other coaches, his assistants go on to be head coaches, that kind of thing. And that's uh, an analogy I would use here. I mean, many of the executive team uh, and, and below that also uh, have gone on to great success in their own right. Um, yeah. They had to be good in the first place to help uh, Scottsdale achieve what it did. And then... Um, Raleigh retired, I'm going to off the top of my head say 1997, 65 was the mandatory retirement agent nationwide. So if for the first time ever, Scottsdale had another president and um, they had continued success, but as uh, the nature taking its course, you had a lot of the, uh, the bench strength going on to lead other teams and other companies. Yeah, yeah, this is what happens. You, you, you want to feel like you get what they're doing. As in any story, you're not interested in a story if you can't relate to what the what the main characters are going through. Right, right. So, so if you don't have a relatable connection with them, and I'm not judging, this is not a judgment. It sure. just shows how 
when a story changes, what will happen with your organization? That's a great story. That's a brilliant story. And thank you for sharing it. 